Good evening, my fellow Americans. Really endanger the lives of Americans who are in Vietnam now. To protect our men who are in Vietnam. Well, I'm not a crook at the desk. And the time has come for action. We must never make the mistake. The difference is in this country. In the next 12 months is involved. You to have peace. And we can if we continue to show firmness and strength to the communist world. To put things in perspective, it was 1971 to 1973, the United States had decided to gradually uh, withdraw from South Vietnam. The, the long-term goal was to have the South Vietnamese Army take over fighting the, uh, the Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese. And of course, the Vietnam War ended in 1975. So the Army and the other branches of the military were withdrawing. However, because of anti-war protests and the general feeling about why we were in Vietnam and some of the atrocities that occurred, uh, there was just a lot of bad feelings about people who served in the military. It got worse and worse and it ended in some pretty bad protests on campus throughout the country in, in the spring of 1970. And the other thing, the Army and the Pentagon had to look at the bigger picture. The Cold War was still going on and we still had to confront the Soviet Union. I was born in Dayton, Ohio, um, December 28, 1947. Um, there are various reasons why I joined. Uh, part of it was um, a sense of duty or a sense of pride. Both of my parents, my dad, uh, Joseph, and my mother, Mary, both served in World War II. My dad served in the Army Air Force in the China Burma India Theater. He died when I was 13, but I remember the stories he told about his experiences and then my mom had very fond feelings. She was a nurse in World War II and served in the 39th Evacuation Hospital. So I had a personal sense of uh, pride in being a member of the U.S. military. as a paratrooper. So in other words, I was eligible and entitled to jump out of perfectly good airplanes. The hardest part is they pushed this really hard physically and mentally. And there were constant reminders, uh, if you just couldn't hack it physically and mentally, we don't want you. And that was part of instilling a sense of pride and esprit de corps. There were three components to airborne school. There was what's called ground week. You spent most of the time practicing exiting out of modified aircraft never were in the air. Uh, there was also something called the 34-foot tower and you practiced jumping from that and when you when you left that uh, thing you were you were suspended by these uh, bungee type cords on a cable and so you left the tower and you got to practice jumping out of an aircraft in this case a 34-foot tower. I remember one of the first times I had to exit they were we were told yell out your name and number and when I stood at that door, glancing down at the ground below, 34 foot below, I couldn't even remember my name, much less my number, and the instructor immediately just shoved me out the door and I went bouncing along the cable. The uh, second week of the training was uh, called Tower Week because the highlight was dropping from a 250 foot tower. They hoisted you up and it had a parachute already deployed and you simply, they cut the lines and you drifted down kind of like a dandelion seat. I always remember my uh, Last week in airborne training, I knew I had to make five jumps that that coming week, and so I thought, well, maybe I better get in touch with God or be on His good side. So I uh, made an effort to try to get to church that Sunday. And as I'm going to the church, there had been a time change. We went over to daylight savings time. So as I'm going to the church, 
everybody's coming out of it. And I says, oh no, this is bad. God's not going to see me here. I'm in trouble. Maybe it's not going to be a good week during uh, the jumps. <laughs> Pretty much most of my assignment on active duty was at Fort Gregg, North Carolina. I was assigned to the 82nd Airborne Division and we were attached to a larger unit, uh, the 3rd Infantry Brigade. So the 82nd was one of the first major army units during the Vietnam era that they started uh, getting, quote, cleaned up. So they went through, if you had a drug problem, you're out of here. If you got an attitude problem, you're out of here. So Yes, I finished active duty, was, I think it was the 29th of June, it was near the very end of June in 1973. I ended up deciding to become a teacher and hopefully promoting environmental education uh, for young people. Final thing I would say, I'm so very fortunate to be an American. This is a very special country. Thank you, and good evening. To fight for the right, and to build the nation's might, and the army goes rolling along. Proud of all we have done, fighting.